The name of this presentation is Trauma, Recovery, and Resiliency. My name is Pamela Ford. I'm a Senior Advocate Investigator for Disability Rights Florida. And this presentation was designed for Family Cafe 2020. Again, my name is Pam Ford. I'm a Senior Advocate Investigator in Special Education on the Advocacy, Education, and Outreach Team at Disability Rights Florida. I volunteered for five years on our Protection and Advocacy for Individuals with Mental Illness Council for Disability Rights Florida. And I worked for 11 years in the field of mental health in Miami-Dade County. Prior to that, I managed the HIV AIDS Health Education Program for the Florida Department of Health in Fort Lauderdale for seven years. Disability Rights Florida is our organization. Disability Rights Florida is Florida's protection and advocacy agency. We receive funding from the federal government so that is where we obtain our authority under nine different federal programs. We are a not-for-profit corporation since 1987. We offer free and confidential services which include information and referral, advocacy, legal representation and negotiation, investigations and facility monitoring, access to education, employment and independence, Elimination of Abuse and Neglect. We have offices in Tallahassee, our main office, and we also have offices in Tampa, Hollywood, Gainesville, and some small satellite offices. Our mission is to advance the quality of life, dignity, equality, self-determination, and freedom of choice for persons with disabilities through collaboration, education and advocacy, as well as legal and legislative strategies. The topics we'll discuss today are adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs, trauma, the ACE questionnaire, health behaviors and conditions, how trauma affects children's learning, and resiliency. Adverse Childhood Experiences, or ACEs. The ACE study was run by Dr. Vincent Felitti from Kaiser Permanente in California and Dr. Bob Anda from the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia. Participants were recruited between 1995 and 1997 and have been followed since then to follow up on their health outcomes. Adverse Childhood Experiences are common although they're usually concealed and unrecognized. The mind may forget these adverse experiences, but the body does not. Adverse childhood experiences are the main determinant of someone's health and social well-being. Trauma, a deeply distressing and disturbing experience. There were 10 types of childhood trauma that were measured in the Adverse Childhood Experience Study. Physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, physical neglect, emotional neglect, a parent who's an alcoholic, a mother who's a victim of domestic violence, a family member in jail, a family member diagnosed with a mental illness, and the disappearance of a parent through divorce, death, or abandonment. The ACE Questionnaire. As the number of adverse childhood experiences increases, so does the risk for negative outcomes. I want to emphasize the word risk. Okay, so just because your risk increases, it doesn't mean that you're going to have negative health outcomes, but it's important to look at our risk so that we can prevent some of these um, adverse health outcomes from coming later on in our lives. 
Some of these adverse childhood experiences include traumatic brain injury, fractures, and burns. These can be from car accidents. These can be from bullying. These can be from fighting, whether that's in a family or jail or a hospital. You never know where someone can hit their head and that can result in a traumatic brain injury. Depression, anxiety, suicide, PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, unintended pregnancy, complications with pregnancy or fetal death, HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases, cancer, diabetes, alcohol and drug abuse, and unsafe sex. Also, education, occupation, income. And I also want to emphasize someone's community impacts this as well as those individuals who are in more impoverished communities often don't even have access to health care. Uh, therefore, they're not going to come in contact with an ACE questionnaire. Um, and even if they did have access to health care, they may not come in contact with this because um, many doctors uh, forget that our mind and body are connected and it's all holistic and anything that affects one affects the other and vice versa. So the health behaviors and conditions that can kind of occur with these adverse childhood experiences um, are associated with the score on the ACE questionnaire. So the more adverse childhood experiences you've had, the higher your score. An ACE score of four or more, when compared with those who have zero ACEs, is associated with, and remember this is comparing a score of four or more to someone who has zero. 240% greater risk of hepatitis, 390% more likely to have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD, 240% higher risk of a sexually transmitted disease, STD, twice as likely to be smokers, which also has an effect on a COPD, 12 times more likely to have attempted suicide, seven times more likely to be an alcoholic, How trauma affects children's learning. The first slide of two. During a stressful event, the sympathetic nervous system activates the fight or flight response. The stress hormone cortisol is released. When the stressor goes away, the nervous system responds and returns the body to normal. However, in a traumatic event, which is caused by unusually large amounts of stress, excess cortisol is released and this has negative effects on the brain, damaging certain neurons in the hippocampus. Damage to the hippocampus impairs the child's ability to form new memories, which affects their ability to learn. How trauma affects children's learning, slide two of two. The child may have difficulty retaining information from verbal sources compared to visual sources. Trauma can affect sustained and focused attention. Symptoms of trauma can mimic problems, including ADHD and other behavioral disorders. Difficulty forming relationships, poor self-regulation, negative thinking, executive functioning challenges. Resilience. Resilience is the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, and threats or significant sources of stress. It is not a trait that people either have or do not have. 
It involves behaviors, thoughts, and actions that can be learned and developed in anyone. To build your resilience, you want to concentrate on making connections. It's difficult to do right now in the age of COVID-19 as far as in-person connections, but we definitely can connect virtually and actually call people and talk with them on the phone as well as texting and FaceTime. Try to avoid seeing crises as insurmountable problems. Accept that change is a normal part of living. Move towards your goals. Take decisive actions. Look for opportunities for self-discovery. Nurture a positive view of yourself. Keep things in perspective. Maintain a hopeful outlook. And take care of yourself in whichever way is the best way for you. Thank you so much. References. The three references that I used for this presentation are listed on the slide. For those of you that may not have access to it visually, one of them was, uh, you can just Google Wikipedia Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. Another one was childmind.org. Those articles that are uh, related to trauma. And then also the uh, American Psychological Association, APA.org, as far as uh, the road to recovery and resilience. 2021 Public Input Planning Survey. Your input really matters to us. Please visit the link below between now and August 15th to complete our annual public input planning survey. Your responses really help us plan our goals, priorities, and objectives for 2021 and help us to let us know what you're concerned with out there in the state of Florida. Thank you again so much for listening. Uh, this is Pam Ford from uh, Disability Rights Florida. I want to thank you again for coming to the session Trauma recovery and resiliency. Uh, our contact information is there on the screen, Disability Rights Florida, 1-800-342-0823-2473 CARE Drive, Suite number 200 in Tallahassee, Florida, 32308. And our website is disabilityrightsflorida.org. Thank you so much.